Erin and I were excited to spend some time in Brisbane. Our busy schedule gives us little time to sit back and explore the cities. On our trip to Australia, we decided to take advantage to take in some of what Brisbane had to offer. Brisbane is a large metropolitan city with over 2 million people. It is the capital of Queensland and the third most populated city in Australia. One of the things Erin and I enjoyed on this trip was the floating walkway. This is a ferry ride that let us explore some of the city and scenery along the way. This was a perfect way to start our adventure in Australia, and we were amazed at the excellent hunting not far away. That next morning we were picked up by Andrew Weber of Kingham Safaris. We had never been to Australia before. We had never hunted in Australia before. So we really didn't know what to expect. Kingham is about two hours from the Brisbane International Airport. It's kind of tucked away. It's almost hidden from the world by about 100,000 acres of national forest. On the drive there, Andrew and I spoke about what to expect. They had over nine different species of animals we could hunt. On this hunt though, we were gonna focus on two, a rusa deer and an axis deer. Kingham Safaris was started over 30 years ago by Bill Weber. It's now run by him and his two sons, James and Andrew. These three combined have over 80 years of guiding experience in this area. So we knew we were in for one incredible hunt. The lodging was outstanding. The scenery was more beautiful than we ever could imagine. Rolling hills everywhere, small pockets of timber, and lush green grass covered this countryside. That first evening we got to camp, we got settled in, and we just decided to take a drive and see what kind of wildlife we could see before our hunt started the next day. Diamonds on him, big strong hounds. His hands are bent that soft. Yep, he's front. I'll just pull up the head, there you go. That first morning of the hunt, we were gonna go after a rusa deer. And I told James, who we were hunting with this trip, that I really wanted to try and get one with a bow. Now where these rusa deer like to hang out, he said it, the odds would be stacked against us, but I wanted to try it anyway. So we went out that morning, did some glassing, and just tried to locate some that way. We didn't see any, so we decided to head down into this canyon to see what we could find.
As we worked our way down and then back up the other side of this draw, we got up to a vantage point where we glassed a little bit. And right away, we saw a couple of Rusa deer. Um, you could just see mainly the tips of their antlers at this point. But James thought we should go for it, and he thought we should try and get over there and get on them. Now, they were in an area that was pretty wide open, and once we got closer to them, there really was no cover to try and get on them with a the bow. But the wind was blowing up this ridge, and so I told him if maybe we moved up there, got set up in the tall grass, maybe one would feed by us and I'd have a shot with my bow. You know, I crawled up to a spot and I kind of peeked over into this draw and I could see two of them bedded there and they were only about 60 yards away. I didn't have a shot though. I went back and told James that I was going to move a little farther up the draw and when I did that, wouldn't you know it, I felt the wind hit me right in the back of the neck. Well, there was a lot more rusa deer than we ever anticipated. But the big one was still only 50 yards from me at this point and I thought if he just turned broadside, I would have my shot. But they were on full alert and uh, I knew they weren't going to stick around for long. Well, you can see, they're just like their cousins back home. When they smell you, they're gonna get out of the country. And that's what happened. Now we did go after these rooster deer all day long with a bow, and we had some close encounters, but we just could never seal the deal. We only had a few days for this hunt, so I was gonna try it one day with the bow, and if that didn't work, the next day we were gonna go out and try it with the rifle, and that's exactly what we did. We headed to the same part of the ranch but the wind was different, so we worked up our way around, and wouldn't you know it, right when we got up to the canyon, we saw a great rusa deer laying in the brush across the canyon. James and I talked about it and we knew there was no way to get closer to this deer without spooking him. He seemed to be bedded down, he was facing away from us, so we thought we're just going to be patient and we're just going to get to a vantage spot where we could lay and wait for him to make the first move. We had crawled out in the tall grass and ranged him at about 125 yards. But he was laying down and I did not have an ethical shot at that point. So at this point it was a waiting game. He had to stand up in order for me to have an ethical shot. So we decided to lay there in the sun and we laid there for a long time. That Australia sun can get really, really warm. And uh, James and I laid there for well over an hour, just kind of waiting for this rusa deer to make his move. Um, the sun was beating down on us. Uh, I was kept trying to keep my spirits above me, kept trying to keep my heart rate under control, because I knew when he stood up, he wasn't going to give us much time, and I'd have to be ready to go as soon as he got out of his bed.
You know, James worked extremely hard on this hunt. That first day we went after those roosted deer with a bow, he put me in some great opportunities, but like bow hunting, sometimes it just doesn't work out. That next day, he also put me on a great opportunity and we were lucky enough to capitalize. As we walked over there, we kind of <laughs> shared some stories of the past couple days and I was filled with pride walking up on my very first Australian outback animal. Well, day three in Australia, and we finally got it done. This is a species that not probably a lot of people don't know about. Um, I really didn't know about them until we decided to come to Australia with Kingham Safaris. Um, this is a Rusa deer, a Moloccan Rusa deer. Uh, they grow three points on each side. You can kind of see this. He's hidden in the grass here. This isn't the grass that he's laying in. This is the grass that's actually on his antlers. Um, I guess they rub pretty hard and they, they dig up the ground around him. And um, we actually found this guy like this this morning. We, uh, we spotted him from a couple hundred yards away. He was bedded down just up behind us here, just on the outside of this tall grass. You can see if they lay in it, you're, you're never gonna find him. Um, he just happened to be laying on the edge of it. We uh, had a big tree between him and I, um, or him and us, excuse me. So we got to within about 150 yards. Um, I, I didn't have a, a, sh a shot with the rifle because of the lay of the land. So we crawled into about 125 yards, got set up, and he was bedded down and we waited and we waited. And the sun was getting higher and it was getting hotter. And after about an hour, he finally stood up and presented a broadside shot. Um, I hit him good the first time and, and I thought he was going right down, but he didn't. I actually ended up putting two more shots into this into this guy, but uh, we got what we came for. I could not be happier. This is my first animal in Australia, and um, hopefully it won't be my last. The next day I was really excited. I was able to go out and look for an axis deer. Now I had never seen one before except for in pictures and they are beautiful animals. It was amazing how plentiful they were in this area. But I wanted to hunt a management deer so this made our hunt a little bit more extreme. Now we didn't have a hard time locating access deer, but it seemed like every time we got up close, the wind would switch and they'd just run off. Yeah, 
Now, we saw a lot of axis deer, so finding them wasn't the problem. It was finding a management deer that was the problem. It seemed like every time we got up close, we'd see one, but it was one that we couldn't shoot. The reason we were looking so hard for a management deer was to give these deer a chance to better their gene pool. We kept coming up on these animals, but it seemed they were all quality deer, not a management access deer. We looked for three days for a management access deer, and we just were never able to locate one. We did enjoy seeing all the animals and being outdoors with such incredible people. So even though I wasn't able to capitalize, this was still an incredible hunt.